Hey guys, Carrick Severe with another video. This time, welcome to my WAP Drago Time Special, where I show you guys the dragon parts and how they're used with each figure, as well as combine them all onto one figure to create Wizard All Dragon. First, let's take a look at the individual parts and which ones they came with, and just kind of give a little bit of an explanation to why they came with each one. Basically, what they did here was actually really was actually pretty clever, simply because what they did was they included each part with the element that made the most sense. For the Drago Skull that breathes fire, they included it with Flame Dragon. With the Drago Wings that give the power of flight, they included it with Hurricane Dragon. With the Drago Tail that can splash water, they included it with Water Dragon. And with the Drago Claws that can dig up dirt, they included it with Land Dragon. So that definitely does work well. It does seem like they kind of prioritized it from the head down to the tail and then the claws. And speaking of the dragon, let's compare them to the wizard dragon itself. So here I've brought in my deluxe wizard dragon, and with it we can actually compare the dragon parts to see how they uh, kind of match up. First off, for the drago skull, and see that. Actually, a pretty close match. They've got about the same colors. The main difference is being that there's a lot of metallic gold paint on here and clear red plastic, whereas this uses a more kind of goldenrod color or just more of an orangey gold plastic with metallic red paint. Those have clear red eyes as well as, as compared to painted eyes. The other big difference is that with the way the mouths work, for this you push back on the head to open up the mouth. With the actual dragon, you can move the head up and down, but the mouth is on its own separate joint. Next for the wings. See again, it's a close match. With the differences being the differences in plastic and paint, as well as these having a bit more of a curve to it, whereas these are more flanned out, or these have more of a bend, rather. For the tail, again a pretty close match, the one big difference being that this, of course, has the uh, wheels here, whereas this doesn't. It's also got a uh, kind of larger print to it, as well as the red gem on the other side that this one doesn't have. And in general, this one has a lower curve to it than this, which is a little bit more strained out. And then, as I explained in the review, but I can now show, the biggest difference is in the claws. As you can see, these ones are both kind of squished together and elongated. You have this part here, which is actually supposed to represent the underside of the claw down here. So while the other three are pretty accurate, the claws, just for the sake of being used by Wizard, had some liberties taken. With that said, let's get back to the figures. So for each figure, they have the same joints for these specific parts. The joints for the Drago Skull are here on the front, up here, then down here below the eyes. The pegs for the peg holes for the Drago Wings are on the back, here and here. The clip for the Drago Tail is down here. And the holes for the Drago Claws are here and here. So first we'll show them, them individually. Drago Skull.
drag a wings drag a tail and drag a claws just like so. Of course I'm using these by default just because this is the Canway do it. As even though I showed their uh, special attack rings for using them with the figures, that was just so I could show off both in the set. But actually all of them in the show use the special ring to obtain their dragon part and they only get one per... Uh, well, each one has their own specific dragon part. So, while you can equip them to the others, that is non-can, and just to save time, I'm going to instead show all dragon, first on its default figure, which is flame dragon, and then on the other four. So, let's prepare for that. Alright, so with our figuring parts in place, let's get started. So first, attach the dragon skull. And open up the mouth. Then the dragon wings. Fold them forward. Then the dragon tail. Make sure you slide on not clip on and lastly the drago claws in this one you d you want to take the most care because you want to make sure that the wrists are aligned with the holes so that way when you have it grip or when the figure has a grip on them you just rotate it back and peg them into place Just like so. And there you have Connor and Wizard, all dragon. Now this is definitely what I gotta say is my favorite form of Wizard just overall. Simply because I love the look that gives him. I mean, I already loved the look of the dragon styles in the first place, but adding all of these dragon parts just creates such a dynamic look. It doesn't add a lot of bulk because each of the parts is confined to a certain part of the body and doesn't exactly serve as like bulky armor. And also really gives that sense that he's really combined with the dragon. As you can see, the head, wings, claws, and tail, which are all the key parts of the wizard dragon. You also just got this nice mix of colors with the red and the gold and the grays and blacks. Not only that, but with the way they're designed, having them all on at the same time does not hinder the articulation because you can move the wings back, rotate the arms all the way around, still rotate the biceps, or the forearms, move the mouth up and down, move around the head, and even rotate the waist. With the add bonus of this, of course, serving as a sort of third leg.
And the added bonus is that because of the way this works, you can use this on all of the other dragon styles. So, let's get to those. For these ones, I'm not going to show you the attachment process since I did with the flame dragon here. I'll just skip right to them. So next we have what I'll refer to as water all dragon, which is of course water dragon with all the dragon parts. And this works out too. What I think is one of the brilliant things about the wizard dragon design is that they picked a color scheme that made it not favor any of the individual four styles, choosing to go more for the kind of colors you'd more see on a dragon in, you know, fiction or mythology, which are, you know, these kind of grays and blacks with bits of gold. The only really thing that kind of ties it more to any one style is the red for the forehead, but you'll notice that the shape of the gem is not quite something that matches any of the shapes of the styles. Well, it is kind of a diamond shape, it is more elongated than the ones you see on water style or water dragon and it's not round enough to uh, really match up with flame style and flame dragon and still has all those different points of articulation third we have hurricane all dragon this one also works quite well, just because with a lot of fiction you do see green-skinned dragons, or green-scaled dragons. And also helps that with each of these they use the same base body, so outside of the colors and some of the details like the shoulders and the head, you are kind of getting variants on the same form. And since they all have the same articulation, it means no one is more or less articulated than any of the others. Last but not least, we have Landall Dragon. Now, in my review of the Wizard Acting Please Land Dragon, I did say that the accent colors match the best with Land Dragon, but that doesn't mean that overall is the kind of thing where the colors seem like it prefers to go with Land Dragon, just because as you can see, none of the colors used on the Drago parts are any of the same colors used on Land Dragon. In fact, not even the gold color is one you see here, because this is supposed to be gold, whereas the stuff on Land Dragon is specifically supposed to be yellow. So it does give a nice sense of neutrality. And there you have it. Overall, Conor Wizard's Dragon Forms are great for figures, especially when you have them all together, because as I showed, you can use any of the dragon parts on any of the figures, and the great part is that with the way the color scheme works, it doesn't feel like the parts prefer any one figure over the others. Obviously, they uh, did think about which parts to include with which figure, but they did distribute them one per figure, so you have the perfect reason to buy all four, as not only do you get those four parts together, but it also lets you use them among the four figures. In a way, it's a really smart thing, because not only do you get more things to add on, but you also get more figures to add them to. And although I didn't show it in the video just to save time, you can use individual parts on the individual figures, even if they weren't used like that in the show. Or even different combinations of parts. And of course, like I've been saying throughout the reviews of the individual figures, definitely go this route instead of the SH figures route, because with Flame Dragon being the only retail release, and Water Dragon, Hurricane Dragon, and Land Dragon all being web shop exclusive, that means that the overall price you're going to be paying is a lot higher, and when it comes down to it, these are just much more, these are just much better proportioned figures than those, just because these carry the body form a lot better with the way that it has a nice straight body, the right kind of angles, a nice shape to the kind of lower coat piece, 
where it bellows out a little bit, but it's not too big. Whereas from, you know, everything I've seen with the uh, SFP Arts versions, they just had this weird thing where they decided to make the upper torso a lot bigger than the lower torso because of, you know, the whole SFP Arts ab crunch thing, as well as just not proportioning the figures well. With these, you still have a great amount of articulation, not as much as SHFs, but enough to get by, as well as all of this nice mold and painted details, because they didn't have to focus anything on, well, they didn't have to focus a lot on, like, electronics or, you know, other kind of bigger gimmicks. So that's definitely the way to go. Now, there is a set that can get you one of these figures and all four parts, which is the uh, Premium Bandai exclusive Conrad Wizard Special Rush, uh, Special Rush set, which was released for Movie War Ultimatum. But the catch with that is that you don't get the parts in the same way as you get with these four figures. And what I mean by that is that for the Special Rush form, the parts were all red instead of gray and black. Well, it does mean they uh, fit better with Flame Dragon, which is the included figure, it also means that they won't fit on the other three, so I definitely say go for the individual figures rather than the Special Rush set. And so there we go. Now, uh, obviously, uh, with this I have skipped over one of the figures in line, or rather a set in the line, and the reason why I did this was as it I felt like it would make a better lead-in, as the one I skipped over does definitely take cues from the dragon forms. So next time, we'll be looking at Counter Beast and the Beast Chimera. So, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, comment, or share. And check me out on facebook.com slash krx50 as well as my channel for more videos. And for now, this is KRX50, riding off.